Hi, Thumos. We got to freaking talk. Now imagine, if you will, that there is a group of people on this earth that don't like you. They don't care about you. They want you to be running around unhappy. Well, guess what? You don't have to be unhappy. That may sound strange. You don't even need to have bad days. Seriously, I don't think you need to have bad days. You may feel a little bit off one day, but it never needs to be something that consumes you. I believe that we were made and we're supposed to be pretty damn happy to be here. We're supposed to be grateful to be here naturally. It's not something you have to really uh, uh, fight yourself to do. So why does it seem that there is a sort of internal fight? Well, let me tell you this. Those people that don't like you have a ritual. And a ritual is something, the best way I can phrase this is uh, Johnny Menzel, not the former football player, Johnny something that wrote the King's Curriculum book said that a ritual is a way to directly communicate with your subconscious. Now, if there are people that hate you, they set up a ritual to directly influence how you think, how you feel, and how you view the world. What they do is begin to program the thought form and the spirit that occupies your, your being, that is in your head, how you see the world. Now, this ritual comes up in a lot of different ways. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Very devilish, very perverse. You see, um, you see little devil figurines running around at the Super Bowl. You know, that's just one option at the uh, Academy Awards. All the movies, subtle programming, subliminal messaging. You, you subject, we subject ourselves to constant rituals, which means that we are reacting to stimulus. Because what I believe is a ritual that you perform for yourself is a conscious action that is not reactionary. Most of us live our lives in a reactionary state more often than we even understand okay here's an example remember last month when trump was running against kamala how much of our algorithms was podcasts news outlets this and that how many times did we click on this you don't got to feel guilty this is just an example now what happened to all that stuff where is it all we were seeing something we were reacting to a stimulus we were getting an info. We thought we were participating in this. Now it's gone. Did we really conjure up this desire to participate in these things? Perhaps, maybe. So many of us react, very actionary, always reacting to stimulus. A notification pops up, the, the news, the weather, news telling yourself, subjecting yourself to what's the weather perhaps going to be later on today what's the world look like outside of my neighborhood where i don't even know my neighbor's name or i don't care if the kid next door is starving what's the what's going on that i need to feel emotion for you know getting hyped up because this is real stuff dude but you just got to take a second to look at it and then it's like boom you start seeing it you start seeing the patterns you start seeing the rituals. When you watch prawn, are you not being bathed in a sort of demented ritual? Two people just going at it and you're sitting there like this. Is this not a cuck ritual? You're like this. Ugh. Cuckening. The, the cuckening ritual. Dude. The movies. The music. The outlets, holy smokes, is it not all a ritual of some sorts? So you have to think. Back to the old Sunday school nursery rhyme. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Because that starts to get inside of you and it corrupts you. Okay? So if ritual is a a way to program the subconscious, then that means that the man has to be responsible for creating ritual within his life and not just reacting 
to a ritual created by businesses, the owners of these businesses, the elites, anything that he does not want to. He has to have rituals and these sort of palisades in place, these perimeters to safeguard the mind. And that is where the importance of ritual comes in. It says in the Bible that you must renew your mind in the, the daily. Renew your mind daily. It says participate in fasting and prayer. Be still and know that I am God. To be still. To not be subject to the noise. To not react to the beauty of music all the time. Or the, the voice within your head to be still, to know that God is God. It says also not to worry about, don't worry. Think of the birds. Think of the birds of the air. Do they worry about when they're going to get fed? What, what they're going to have to do tomorrow? Just worry about today. Do what's in front of you. Worry about what's today. You don't have to be unhappy. Unhappiness comes when you think about the future, when your mind has been so programmed by rituals that are not of your control but you've subject yourself to these rituals and now you're worried and you're filled with chaos and you don't have peace your peace has been disturbed be still know that i am god consider the birds does their father in heaven not provide for them should should you worry that life is somehow going to throw you under the bus you know, that, that you're not going to figure this thing out. The, the worst a lot of us could be is homeless. And honestly, if you got a job or, or you got some income, you're not going to let yourself get homeless. A lot of us got our health. A lot of us got our, our wits. We're smart. Dude, we're not going to die. And even if we die, big deal. This is just but a moment in time. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. What's there to fear? And so... Every man, I believe, should take up, should have the courage almost to participate in some form of ritual. For me, someone asked me if I pray. The answer is yes, I do pray. And I have been making it a tradition to pray during dinner time as when we sit down. Not only is this a way to show gratitude, but this is a way for me and my fiance to sit down and to Take an action that is of our own will for just a moment of our day. Not reacting to anything else, but choosing to set up a beacon and sit there. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this meal that we're about to receive. Please bless this food to our bodies. Please nourish us. Please show us what you would have us do. Show us your will that we could keep going forward. Do you understand but there's a lot of dimwits that hear about this. And their Reddit minds, their soy minds have been so corrupted that they don't see how this could possibly benefit a human brain. If you just took a moment to consider that humans are storytelling creatures, we are belief-driven creatures, what, what we think, what we have going on up here, that little hamster wheel dictates how we live our life. And so many people brush it aside. No, nope, we shouldn't do that. But guess what? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll lose our minds to everything else that the world gives us. We'll freak out and stress, you know, but the moment that it just, let's sit here. Let's have a, an action that we created, a ritual for ourselves that we participate in together where we give things where we take a moment to stop, where we have peace, where we look for guidance, where we are still and we're not having any more noise of our own accord. So I believe that ritual should be something that you do. I think that if you have a family, you should have ritual. I think that if you have a woman, if you're trying to be a leader, a leader again, as Napoleon said, is a dealer in hope. How can you lead a family? How can you lead a woman if you do not give her hope through certain rituals? Through making her feel like she is a part of something. Many men have zero ritual. Zero ritual these days. The ritual is the game. 
The ritual is the, the football game. Simulation of war. The ritual is the drinking. How are we supposed to live? How are we supposed to live do, being dictated by others? By other people that perhaps maybe don't want the best for you. Don't care about you. And so it's up to you. Being a leader is being a dealer in hope. In creating a vision. In setting up rituals. In setting up defense for the home, the life that depends on you to foster it, to nourish it, to keep out the evil, to keep out the demonic forces, to keep out the mindset from crumbling down. And what does it give into when there's nothing, when there's not a strong foundation, that's when fear comes in. That's when it gets corrupted. That's when doubt, that's when you lose your faith. You lose belief. You're unable to see clearly. People laugh at this. People think this is a joke. People, but yet there's so much misery in the world. And we go, we go to, there's probably going to be an ad planned. Better help. Talk to a therapist that doesn't give a shit about you. When you have all the power that you ever could need. If you just saw clearly, you know, and you acted out of that. And so that's all I got to say right now. Sit, take your nuts in your hand and take some responsibility for your life. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, ears, what you hear. Because it will program you and it will change you. You don't have to live your days in fear. You don't have to you don't have to feel stressed. You don't have to be unhappy. You have all the power. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Use that power. Use your sound mind. Be savvy to the to the perverseness that is out there. You don't have to be angry. You shouldn't be angry. But you should be astute. You should be aware. All right? Have a blessed day. Keep yourself guarded. Be around strong men. Come join us in the group if you haven't already. We're prepping for the new year. I will talk to you soon. Keep it out, Dumos. Peace.